When archaeologists go digging for something, they usually have a pretty good idea about what they might find. When they find what they're expecting to find, it still counts as a good day for them. When they find something unexpected, though, it makes their day a little bit more special and a lot more challenging. All the finds you're about to see in this video fit that category. Unusual finds that took a lot of explaining. Giant sloth lemurs don't exist today, but they did long ago. Like many of the animals that surrounded our ancient ancestors, they've become extinct over the passage of time. Unlike most of those animals, though, the sloth lemur didn't appear to be of interest to the cave painting artists of thousands of years ago, or at least not until now. In September 2020, the first ever drawing of a giant sloth lemur was found on a wall inside a rock shelter in Madagascar. The discovery was made in Andrea Mamello Cave, not far from the village of Anahydrano. Archaeologists believe the paintings to be around 2,000 years old, but don't know who made them. The local ethnic groups are known as the Vazimba, but don't recognize the work as their own. Stranger still is the repeated use of an M-shaped motif next to many of the images. It's vaguely similar to a character used in Ethiopia's Amharic alphabet, but not so close that experts can say it's a match. Did these people have a written language? Is there a message here that we can't yet understand? It's too early to say. You don't have to look very far to find an interesting ancient tomb in Greece, but some draw more fascination than others. When this one was discovered close to the ancient city of Amphipolis in 2014, it was considered such a big deal that Prime Minister Artonis Samaras turned up to see it in person. It's not hard to see why it attracted so much attention. This is the largest tomb ever to be found in the country and is an especially elaborate burial chamber with marble walls and intricate frescoes on the walls. Archaeologists and historians don't yet know who it was built for or even who made it. In terms of age, though, it belongs to the time of Alexander the Great some 2,300 years ago. Its design suggests it was probably made by someone who belonged to the elite of Macedonian society rather than neighboring Greece. Lavish burials were frowned upon in the Greek city-states of the era, but the Macedonians had no such reservations. It's odd that the name of the tomb's occupant isn't etched into the walls, but perhaps we're looking in the wrong place. The oddest thing about the tomb of Cyrus the Great in Pasargarde, Iran, is that we're not 100% sure that the body of Cyrus the Great was ever laid to rest inside it. We know that Pasargarde is the former capital of Persia and that Cyrus the Great founded the Archimedes Empire. So it would make sense for him to be buried here, but no one knows for sure. The monument was clearly built for somebody impressive, though, and so it holds UNESCO World Heritage status. The Achaemenid dynasty was founded roughly 2,600 years ago under the guidance of Cyrus and was the very first ruling dynasty of the Persian Empire. Ancient legends say that even when Alexander the Great conquered the city 300 years after its founding, he had his tomb renovated as a way of paying tribute to Cyrus. Sadly, even if that's true, we can't prove that this tomb was the one Alexander had renovated. There's even some suggestion that it might be the tomb of the mother of the great prophet Suleiman instead. This is the problem that comes with trying to authenticate a tomb that doesn't have a body in it. At some point in the distant past, some decided to create a vineyard directly on top of an ancient Roman villa in Verona, Italy. This part of the country is known for its winemaking, so much so that the quality of Verona's wine was noted in the writings of Pliny the Elder during the first century. But that's still not a good reason to destroy a beautiful villa to make room for one. Fortunately, the villa's stunning mosaic floors have survived the passing of the last 1800 years and were still there for archaeologists to find when they dug the area up in May 2020. When the experts first noted the presence of the villa, they feared that the mosaic floors might have been damaged by roots. But that isn't the case. That's a near miracle. Historians have always believed there was once a villa in this part of the city, 
but numerous digs had been carried out since 1922 without success. It took 100 years of searching to find these floors, and they were worth the wait. The only person who isn't happy about the discovery is the vineyard's owner. This is still an active wine-producing facility, and the archaeologists have ripped up a lot of it. The correct name for our next discovery is the Pietrasale treasure, but it's more fondly known by archaeologists as the Hatching Hen and the Golden Chicken. The Hall of Golden Gothic 4th Century Artifacts was discovered in a grave in Pietrasale, Romania in 1837. Rather than being found by professionals, the valuable objects were found by laborers from the village while quarrying limestone in preparation for the construction of a new bridge. Until the opening of Tutankhamun's tomb in the 1920s, the Pietrocell treasure was thought of as one of the greatest ancient gold discoveries in world history. 22 objects were unearthed in total, including a large fibula in the shape of an eagle's head, a patera with Gothic figures carved into its side, and a neck ring with an unusual runic inscription. The laborers were poor, so they cashed in on their lucky finds by selling them to an Albanian businessman called Verusi. Unforgivably, Verusi broke several of the finds into smaller pieces to make them easier to transport. He got away with smuggling the treasure for a while, but the authorities caught up with him a year later. The pieces now belong to the National Museum of Romanian History. Here's another fabulous 4th century find. It's a fine mosaic of a chariot race, and it was found on the island of Cyprus in late 2016. The sublimely detailed mosaic, which covers a whole floor, shows scenes of an ancient chariot race taking place in a hippodrome. It's the only known artwork of its kind in Cyprus, and one of only a handful known to exist anywhere else in the world. Some historians believe that the images contain a hidden message. Four chariots, all of which are drawn by four horses, are shown competing against each other. This might be a metaphorical representation of the four factions who were known to be competing for control of ancient Rome at the time. The mosaic was found around 20 miles west of Nicosia in a region of the island's interior about which very little is known in terms of ancient history. It was probably part of a villa, but if so, nothing else of the villa has survived the passing of the centuries. The majority of important archaeological finds that happen in Cyprus take place closer to the coasts. So if someone rich and powerful lived here, they might have done so in isolation. Ceramic discoveries are common for archaeologists, and they're often not all that interesting. However, this one is different. It's a 3,000-year-old jar that was discovered at the archaeological site of Kirbet Kayafa in Israel in 2015. The age alone makes it significant as it dates the piece to a time of King David's reign, but there's something else that makes this discovery special. Inscribed across the fractured pieces of the vessel is the name Eshbaal ben Beda. That's a name with biblical connections. According to the Bible, Eshbabal was a ruler in Israel the same time as David, but was killed by assassins, after which his head was presented to his rival. This is the first time that his name has appeared on an ancient artifact in the country, and it excites archaeologists because the age of the piece fits the right timeline for it to be the same person who's mentioned in the ancient text. Does that mean that this jar belonged to the assassinated ruler? Not necessarily. Another explanation might be that this is the ancient equivalent of a brand logo, identifying the person who'd produced and packed the contents of the jar. Still, it's a tantalizing possibility. Archaeologists have at least had some idea of the purpose of the discoveries we've looked at so far in this video. This next one left them baffled. It's a collection of unusual metallic spheres that was discovered in a temple in Mexico in 2013. The discovery took place inside the 1800-year-old Temple of the Feathered Serpent in Teotihuacan in small, narrow, underground chambers that are inaccessible to humans. To see into the chambers, archaeologists had to send in a robotic exploration rover equipped with a camera. The impossibility of touching or extracting the balls has made it difficult for archaeologists to identify them 
or guess at their purpose. From footage obtained by the robot, they believe them to be mostly made of clay but coated with pyrite to give them a golden appearance. They range in size between 2 and 5 inches in diameter. It's possible that the spheres were left behind as votive offerings during the construction of the temple, but votive offerings usually take more recognizable shapes. This is yet another mystery of Teotihuacan that might never be solved. When a set of three-fingered, unusual-looking mummies was found in Nazca, Peru in 2015, UFO enthusiasts all over the world got excited about the possibility that they might be the remains of an extraterrestrial species. The truth might even be stranger than that. Instead of being aliens, scientists say that these mummies are made of various looted ancient body parts that have been stuck together as an elaborate hoax. The presentation of the mummies in a seated position is typical of the ancient Nazca burial tradition. That makes it possible that the remains started out as genuine Nazca mummy discoveries, but they were then altered because, for whatever reason, whoever found them decided that they weren't interesting enough in their original state. The strange white coating that covers the bodies was apparently added as an attempt to mask the signs of the grotesque alterations. Even now, you'll find a few websites claiming that they are genuinely the remains of an unknown human-like species. But the majority of the science world agrees that this apparent mystery has been solved. Archaeological digs in the ancient Turkish city of Basin have been ongoing for several years now. The discoveries that have been made there are so significant that Basin is currently on the tentative list for UNESCO World Heritage status. One of the most interesting recent finds to be unearthed there is a 700-year-old cistern which was found in August 2020. It's quite an elaborate construction made from cut stone in a rectangular shape, with a barrel vault and supporting arch. This would have been an important facility for the city during times of war. Cutting off a city's water supply was often the first tactic of anyone laying siege to a city, as without water, the city's authorities would usually surrender in a matter of days. A network of cisterns inside a city might allow it to hold out for long enough to repel the attacking hordes. Curiously, a much older stone carving of a woman carrying water was found inside the cistern. Rather than being 700 years old, archaeologists think the figurine is closer to 2,500. That means it would have already been ancient by the time of the cistern's construction and might have been placed inside it deliberately for unknown reasons. The Muniyara Dolmens of India, sometimes also known as the Marayor Dolmens because of where they're located, are among the most important ancient monuments in the country. These Neolithic-era relics are at least 5,000 years old, and perhaps even older. Archaeologists think they were designed as above-ground tombs, arranged in a simple formation with large granite slab walls and a capstone on the top. This would be considered an elaborate burial for someone living in India 5,000 years ago, which might explain why there are so few of them. If you're interested in seeing them with your own eyes, though, you might be best advised to do so sooner rather than later. The dolmens are in a state of decay and have become a controversial topic among archaeologists in the country. Repeated requests have been made for financial aid from the state to conserve the site, but so far none has been forthcoming. Houses have even been built on land that encroaches onto the site of the dolmens. They've lasted for thousands of years, but may not last much longer unless something is done to help them. For a very long time, historians have believed that there was only one temple in the ancient kingdom of Judah. The temple, known alternatively as Solomon's Temple and the First Temple, is a cornerstone of everything we think we know about the ancient history of this part of the world. In February 2020, we found out that the first temple might not have been alone. In a development that shocked the country's religious scholars, an Iron Age temple has been found close to Jerusalem. Archaeological evidence at the site proves that the temple building was in use at the same time as the first temple, although there are telltale signs that Yahweh was worshipped within its walls, religious idols have also been found at the site. 
This might be a sign that the power of the ruling elite might not have been as strong as the Bible would have us believe. The temple was built approximately 2,900 years ago and lasted for around 300 years. Based on historical records, its very existence seems to defy the will and specific instructions of King Josiah and King Hezekiah. Maybe the reach of the royals didn't extend far beyond their palaces. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.